to begin the hem, I'm going to pick up stitches by picking up two rows and then skipping one and then picking up two and skipping one to skip this one. I'm going to poke all the way through the knitting front to back to pick up that first stitch and I'm going to try to keep my pickups in a very straight line for the best possible finished result. So I'm just going to do two at a time using this tool. And I'm going to pick up the whole width of this and come back on camera and show the next step to making the hemmed edge. When all the stitches are picked up, you have something that looks like this really kind of odd and awkward and what I like to do is flip it inside out so then it'll look like that and that will make it a little easier to hang weights on it bring all of the stitches all the way out to hold position while holding the knitting back and then it's a very good idea to add one extra stitch on each end that is going to be for seaming you're going to have to do a mattress stitch seam on the hem to help finish this off. And finally, it does need to be weighted before I proceed. I have some of these long brass weights and they're nice for a job like this. So I'll put these on. The little claw weights would work fine as well. Let's put a couple of those on. That's good enough. It doesn't need the fussy weighting that it needed when I was doing the short rowing. Now the machine is still set on tension 8. And it's set to knit all the needles and I'm simply going to knit slowly across for the first row of the hem. I'm going to go back and e-wrap the end needle and just put a clothespin on that bit of yarn and let it hang down. I'm going to do the same thing at the other end. E-wrap, no clothespin. Of course, there's no end. Now, I want to do an eight row deep hem. So that was row one. Row two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. The next step in a pico hem is the eyelet row and one of the ways that you can simplify the eyelet row is to go ahead and use the lace carriage to do it. You just bring every second needle out a little ways so that they'll be in the path for the lace carriage. Then you run the lace carriage across and it will do all those tedious transfers. Disengage it on the right hand side and lift it right off. And the eyelet row has been done. Now I like to move all of the needles out to hold position before I do the second eight rows of the hem. And I'm going to do the second eight rows of the hem now. step on the hem is to fold it up and pick up the stitches and if you bring up the edge of the knitting and especially on this little blue section I can see the green stitches that I need to pick up so what I'm going to do is get the little green stitch and lift it onto the needle and the first one or two may be difficult but after that this will be quite easy to do
I need to do this the whole way across the knitting, so I'll finish that off camera. I picked up all those stitches. Now I want the closing row to be as loose as it can possibly be made. I was already on tension 8, so I only have a couple of tensions I could turn up, but I've gone as loose as I can there, and then all the way across I'm going to keep loosening the upper tension. So I'll pull a few stitches and then loosen and go a few more stitches and loosen and a few more stitches and loosen. This way I'll be able to do the loop through loop bind off and I won't have quite so much bulk. Okay, I've got my latch tool and I'm just going to do the loop through loop bind off and see if I got it loose enough so that it'll be okay. I tried very hard to get this loose enough so I could use this bind off. This is not a terribly elastic bind off. So I'll do that all the way across and talk about the next step. Here's the little hat. I need to turn it wrong side out and I need to kitchener stitch it from here to here, mattress stitch the hem here, and draw up the little circle in the top. So I'm going to do that sewing and then show it on camera. So here I have a pink hat that's really made of odds and ends. As a matter of fact, I had some leftover pink yarn that I I used for the band because I didn't have any more of the striped yarn. And here's a blue hat that I made small enough for an infant. The pink hat's really toddler sized. And this is a big baby. I'm thinking maybe nine, ten months, although I did use the measurements in the Yarn Council of America head circumference. So that's the hem. You could use ribbing or some other kind of hem. And the hat tends to stand up by itself. It's really very round and I'll turn it. You can see the, the converging lines at the crown. So fun little project. Great way to tune up your ability to do short rows.